This episode is brought to you by Young Sidekick, an innovative, secure, and 100% HIPAA-compliant AI solution designed for therapists. It cuts the time spent on progress notes by 10x, helping you stay more present during sessions while providing insightful analytics to elevate the quality of care. And you can get an exclusive 20% off your first purchase with promo code LISA20 at checkout at youngsidekick.com. That's young, Y-U-N-G, dash sidekick.com, or just click the link in the show notes. Welcome to The Therapy Show. I'm Lisa Mustard, your host and guide on this journey of learning and professional growth. Here, we transform the way you earn continuing education contact hours. Whether you're on a walk, on a break in between sessions, commuting, or even preparing dinner, you can engage with cutting edge insights from leading subject matter experts. Each episode features conversations with seasoned professionals who share effective techniques and tools tailored for busy therapists like you. Our goal is to enrich your practice and fit seamlessly into your active life, ensuring you stay informed and inspired without the hassle of traditional methods. You can say goodbye to sitting in front of a computer screen watching hours and hours of recorded trainings. Instead, we make continuing education as easy and accessible as your favorite podcast. So make sure to visit the website, lisamuster.com to sign up for our continuing education membership. It's a fantastic way to earn your credits while enjoying the podcast. Join us on the therapy show where your professional development continues wherever you are. Well, hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the therapy show. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard, and I'm thrilled for you guys to meet this week's guest. Her name is Elizabeth Sudo. Welcome to the show, Elizabeth. It is so fabulous to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. Oh, me too. And before we hit record, I was sharing with Elizabeth a little bit about how I found Elizabeth and what she's going to talk about today. You guys know I talk a lot about therapists and being burnout and using our skills and pivoting and trying and doing something new. And last year I was searching for a podcast episode on burnout and I came across Teacher Career Coach. And I don't know exactly which podcast it was, but it it had me like, binge listen to so many episodes of teacher career coach because it's very similar yet different teachers and therapists were so excited we want to get in there we want to make a change we want to do good and then we get burnout or we hit burnout and we get we just get stuck and we don't we don't know how to see outside of the current role that we have so I'm going to stop talking and I want Elizabeth to share who she is what she does and how she got here because it's such a great story Oh, well, thank you. And I'll see see how I can keep this kind of concise. Um, but I'm the operations manager for Aspireship. I'm also the teacher career coach podcast host. And I'm super excited to learn about this community here because with teacher career coach, we work a lot with counselors in the education space, which I know therapists are helpers, counselors, counselors are helpers. So can't wait to dive into some of those. And yeah, I Grew up uh, in South Carolina and learned that Lisa lives in South Carolina too. I then got into teaching. I was a teacher um, for a little less than a decade. And that's when I really started to feel that burnout that some of you guys are feeling. And I wasn't sure really where to go from there. I, you know, I had been a teacher, got this master's degree and really was like, I've invested so much time and money into this. How can I switch careers in my late thirties. I don't know. So at that point, that's when I really started networking, find meeting friends and learning that like, there's so many industries out there, so many different spaces. And originally I was um, focused on ed tech, but really got my eyes open to just the amount of like different organizations there are, and you can still be a helper in different positions. So I didn't want to lose that. I was as a teacher, I really wanted to stay in that helping role. And so I kind of pivoted into an administrative assistant role to kind of like get a stepping stone job, get my foot in the door, which was wonderful because that's um, where I am now at that same company with Aspireship, grew into the operations manager there. And a little bit about us, we're a career development platform and we have on-demand training programs. So if you're looking to upskill or reskill, it's a great avenue just to explore different careers that are out there. Very cool. Yes. And go, well, I was going to say go Gamecocks, but then I remembered go Tigers because 
you, like you said, you went to Carolina for a year and then transferred to Clemson. <laughs> so I my, love house, that. my household is divided or yeah. my, my parents. So my dad and brother love Gamecocks. Mm -hmm. My sisters and I, and my mom love the Tigers. So we like them all. <laughs> well, we had a great weekend for both teams. I'm just going to put it out there. If you saw any of those games, it was a very exciting weekend and uh, Carolina and Clemson play in two weeks. So Gosh, I hope, you know, in the past, I would have thought like Clemson's got this, but man, I think Carolina's going to give them a hard time. So <laughs> anyway, anyway. Okay. Yes. So I am fascinated by this idea of what aspireship does and helps people do because so many therapists are, you know, they're burnout, they're tired, they feel stuck. They don't know what else they can do. They have the debt. Maybe some of them still have the debt. Um, they've, they've devoted so much time and energy, but they, you know, you hit a wall and you just think I've got to make a change for whatever reason. There's so many of them right now out there floating around, but a lot of therapists are, I see them in the Facebook groups. There's like a gajillion Facebook groups for therapists. Like I'm sure there are for teachers and they're like, what else can I do with my degree? What else can I do with my degree? And I'm sometimes I'm thinking maybe it's not so much the degree, but maybe it's your skill set that you could look at and really flush out because you have skills. You definitely have a set group of skills to being a therapist, but you have other skills. Like for me, when I think about what else I would do outside of therapy, I know that I love, I love podcasting. I love media. I love to write my undergrad degrees in communications. I have a, a knack. I get excited about those types of things. So for me, I would probably, and I am, cause I have a podcast, but I would pursue those things that interest me. And I would start to look to network. I would look for positions that you know, I hate, I know people aren't going to like this, but entry level, you're going to have to probably take a little bit of a cut if you want to change careers, but that doesn't mean that you can't quickly evolve or grow into another position. And I know that on the podcast, you talk to so many teachers who, who do that. And I know that there's like a mindset shift that they had to make. So is there, could you speak on that a little bit? Like, like, what do you, so let's say you're a therapist and you get to the point where you're like, okay, You've taught me into it. I'm going to look at these other careers. Where would you go first with that therapist? First, I would really focus on finding that career clarity okay. and narrowing down a path. So what will set them up for success, I think, is really figuring out, like you said, what are those skills that you have? What excites you? And then what's a position that you could see yourself doing every day? Okay. And then that's it's kind of tricky too, because it's also new to us. It's like, well, where do we go to find that out? Or how do, you know, you, you network, of course. And then there's also looking at different places to upskill. So one spot um, that I like for Aspireship is that we do have a couple different courses, sales, marketing, um, rev ops and customer success. And you can go into the platform and it's exploratory. So you can go check out the different um, level one, we call them foundations programs and kind of look and see, is this something I'd be interested in, be curious? So that's kind of where I'd start is just starting to explore different careers. And like you said, really kind of tracking, making a list and where can you kind of narrow it down? Like, oh, these are my top two so far that are the most interesting to me. Now I'm really going to dive in upskill and, and meet people in those positions. Okay. So does Aspireship, I, I know I've looked at it. I've looked at those. Um, what do you call them? You just called it something. Um, Found foundations. Courses. Foundation. Yeah. So you can get on, the, you can go into there, just log in and look at some of that, right? Like you don't have to sign up for the program itself or do you? So you can sign up for free and okay. sec section one for all the courses are free. So that's where I'd kind of start, go in, explore, see if you like it. And then if one of them really interests you, you know, you can dive down that path. And then we also have level two paths. So if you get further down and you're learning to, to go from there. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. Cause I remember looking at the, I think it was the customer success portion. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be really fitting for a lot of therapists because it's about relationships. It's about helping people be successful. It's probably showing them how to, how to do things, or you're engaging with that uh, client on some level and helping them be successful with your product or whatever it is that you're representing the job that you have. What else does that look like? Is there other, other jobs in that client success or client relations that you can? Yeah, it could be, um, an account manager, enterprise, customer success manager, manager of customer success. There's so many different titles for that position. Okay. And like you mentioned with the skills two really stand out for me that 
I know a lot of counselors have in the education space, which is that set them up for success as in customer success. And one is uh, difficult conversations. So, you know, therapists are always communicating their person or client is in a safe space. They're having to talk about difficult things. And that's when you get with, if you're working with businesses, there could be difficult conversations if clients don't, aren't happy with the product. So yeah. I feel like they already kind of have that knack or ability to really be able to professionally and calmly like deescalate a conversation. Sure. And then the other one um, that I think a lot of, you know, educators, therapists have is onboarding. So that's a huge part of customer success. And really that's, you know, getting your student, patient, client set up for success and, and having a plan. So those kind of two stand out to me. Okay. That's cool. Can you think of um, a client or a student that you've had go through the program that was a therapist and was looking to switch and maybe what it was like, what it was like for that person? Do you have any? Yeah, any I, I have. So um, this was a school counselor, mm -hmm. if this story would work, but I remember chatting with her. She had been in the prof profession for 18 years. So long time veteran. And, and her first step was really reflecting. She knew she was burnt out and she came to the conclusion, you know, I can either stay for my retirement or I can do something new. And it was worth it to herself, her family, her mental health sure. to switch gears. And she was talking about some of that struggle, um, while she was still in the profession, she had a child with special needs. And so she was just getting so frustrated and running out of patience. And, you know, now that she's on the other side, she upskilled, she's now a customer success manager. She was talking to me just the other day and she was like, you know, I have so much more patience and I can enjoy my family. And it just made me so happy to hear that, that, you know, I mean, it, it was definitely, it's a process. It's, it's a lot to change a career. Um, and it can be definitely difficult with the have getting someone to take a chance on you switching careers, but it was just so nice to hear like the aftermath of it being so positive. Yeah, I know. And I think that's why I love your podcast so much is because you, you talk to so many, well, not, you know, mainly teachers, but that have, I was nervous, I was scared, but I couldn't, I just couldn't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Like you finally hit that wall and then they share about how they were nervous and how they were scared and fearful. And they just took that leap of faith and decided to go through the Aspireship program. And it's just like to hear their relief in their voices <laughs> when they're talking about it. They're like, I would tell anybody to do this. It's just been, even if you're just curious, or you're not sure. It's got me curious for sure. I really, I really would love to, to dive into the program and just, and just see, because I've thought about it off and on for years, you know? And then like, like the one you were just saying, I come back because I've been doing this for so long and I have the retirement and, but is that enough? Is that enough for me to stick it through for how many more years before I can retire and is, is the work as fulfilling as it used to be five, seven, 10 years ago? So, and I think that it, maybe a few years ago, I would have been a little bit embarrassed or ashamed to actually say that, but I feel like I've, I've evolved as a person and I know my priorities have shifted. And so it's like, um, it's okay for me to say it out loud. Like I'm not, I'm not embarrassed by it and I'm not ashamed by it. So I, I hope the therapists listening who are wondering if it's time to try something or look at something new, like we get it. We get it. And it's okay. <laughs> you can, you can, you can do this. There's nothing to be, to be ashamed about. Um, okay. So you mentioned, I know we talked about like the customer success and then you said rev ops, you said, was it marketing too? Mm -hmm. that you guys yeah. do? Okay. And what was the other one? Sales. Sales. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you talk a little bit about what those look like? Yeah. So the foundations programs for all of them, they're on demand about 20 hours of content and learning, and you can spread out, you know, how quickly or slowly you want to do the programs. And for sales, it's the full cycle. So SDR and AE. So you're going from cold call prospect prospecting uh, to closing. So you're learning that full cycle. That way, if you start out as an SDR, you're doing cold calls and then maybe one day you get promoted to AE, you've got some of that familiarity from the course. So what's, um, what's the SDR? A sales development representative. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, AE would be an account exec, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay. So you really teach from A to B, like you're teaching. If, if this sounds interesting to you, it teaches you from how to go from cold call to an account exec. I think that's really cool. That's awesome. And the one thing <clears throat> I know I'm biased, but, but I've gone through the programs and I'm not, you know, I'm not in a sales position, but they've all helped me in my role in operations because the content is with industry experts. So we have subject matter experts and especially the sales um, is based on the late Skip Miller's consultative selling approach and everything's um, videos with experts. So it's just engaging, you know, it's not like slideshow click here. And then there's also role plays and practice projects um, throughout all of the courses. Mm -hmm. So that's really helpful. It just gives you a feel for, you know, Hey, can I do a cold call role play or, you yeah. know, it just gives you that practice to, to think about, um, how that would feel because that's what you'd be doing in that role. So I like it. It's some, it's real world kind of experience and projects. Yeah. That's really cool. I love that. And sales, I think for so many people sounds kind of scary or slimy, you know, they get like, I don't want to be sold something, but I mean, we, we have to sell our services as therapists all the time. So, you know, it's, I don't think it's, maybe just kind of shift your mindset around what, what you're selling. And, you know, if you can believe in the product, it seems like you can, you can, I mean, I could sell anything if I believe in the product, in the product, I think it's not natural for me to sell, but I think with guidance and support, I could learn how to do that. And then you said marketing. So what is the marketing, uh, foundation courses, what do they look like? Before going into that, I just wanted to touch on what you said. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like I thought sales was scary too. And now it, like you mentioned, you're selling all day long in your current role and you, all of these people, teachers, therapists, educators, they are. And once you get into it, it really is active listening and then pr solving their pain points and their problems. And so it's like so many of you all have those skills already. So it's fun to see the ones who've transitioned over being really successful in sales. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. I know you're right. It's like active listening, solving problems, finding what the obstacle is and helping overcome. I think that's, yeah, we already do that. I mean, maybe not as concise, you know, mm -hmm. in like one session, but that's what, how, like, that's how I think it's like, what's going on here? Like, what's the root issue? And then mm -hmm. how do I help them come to the answer with questioning and pointing things out and sometimes challenging what they think is true, but I think that's great. Like we already have those skills. Okay. Awesome. So yeah. we're two for two now or yes. <laughs> Yeah. Two for two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then the B2B marketing course. So that's business to business is in partnership with Refine Labs agency, which is a really well-known marketing agency. And that really goes over demand generation and how things have kind of changed from companies getting leads in to more focusing on building, you know, brand trust, yeah. people coming to you saying, oh, I know your product can solve this problem. It's trustworthy. And so within that program, you're learning a lot of um, different things with paid social, dark social, email campaigns. So, you know, if you're interested in marketing, I know a lot of us have those transferable skills too, because you're, yeah. you're also doing that in your job somewhat, you know, marketing um, and helping people point them in the right direction to the right resources. Uh, and that. Yeah. And that one also has a level one foundations course and then the full intensive. So depending on how far or deep you want to go in your learning, okay. you can kind of start, start with the beginning and go from there. Very cool. I love that. That's cool. <laughs> it's changing so much. Okay. And then the fourth one was RevOps, right? You oh. got it. Okay. Rev yeah. Revenue operations in partnership with the Workflow Academy. So that's really, if you're in a company, maybe a startup, for a smaller business and you want to build a database to kind of house everything so marketing and sales can work together. So I would think if you're really data oriented, you like to kind of be in the back back end of things. So not necessarily running meetings, being with clients all day, you're kind of on the back end building things and making everything work um, and become more efficient for your team. So they they all kind of rely on you to make sure the database is organized. You've got automated emails, campaigns going out. And so that one's also very uh, fun too, because I know a lot of people 
in the education space, like with report cards, with data, with test scores, they love that part, like analyzing data. And I know therapists as well probably have a whole section of notes they have to do and compliance. <laughs> yeah. And also too, therapists who, who love data, I mean, who, who really kind of get into the research and like looking at studies and understanding what like prevalence of issues. I think that would be you know, somebody who's really kind of like data and research driven will probably really enjoy something like that. And as you were talking about all these, the different courses that you have, I I kept thinking, do you, to do the Aspireship program, do you have to have a degree or can anybody do it? No, anyone can do it. Okay. So that's really cool. So you don't have to go to college anymore to learn a lot of these skills. That's pretty, Mm -hmm. pretty amazing. Wow. So our founder and CEO, Corey Cossack, when he had the idea and built Aspireship, um, that was one of the things. Mm -hmm. How can you upskill and reskill by not breaking the bank, not having to go back to school? Maybe you didn't go to college in the first place, but he really believes that if you have those skills, you can transfer them to a different position. And so um, that's what, you know, that's why we've seen some success, lots of success with people transitioning from, you know, 20 years in the classroom to going into sales. So it's just, it's great to see that to where people aren't having to, because I know that's a hurdle thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to go back to college. I've got to do this. And there's ways around that. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, really and truly, it's, it's pretty amazing what is available now. Do you, any, are there companies out there that will hire Aspireship to come in and train their employees? Do you have anything like that that happens? We do have a B2B side where we offer our training to businesses Mm -hmm. as well. So we do have a lot of company partners and they'll say, you know, I want to train my customer success team and we want to go through your program. And we actually have a partnership now with a nonprofit and we have a Mm -hmm. grant program. So if there are any companies out there looking to train their employees or upskill, there's a process which we do that that's funded by a grant. So that's also really excited. Excited. That is cool. Oh, that's really, that's really neat. I love that. So what's on the horizon for Aspireship? What else are you guys working on? That's a great and timely question. So we actually just launched a new career exploration platform called Orchard, and you can access it. Just go orchard.careers. And it's the biggest video library of careers where we interview professionals in other industries. And you can go through, explore, watch, and there's information about every career, like skills needed, salary, pros and cons. We're excited to kind of see and get feedback on this because in that same shift where so many people are switching careers, looking for new ones, it's it's helpful to be able to have like a hub or a spot where you can just learn. Yeah. So it's all all over the board and it's kind of fun to explore. So oh that's really cool. Okay. We'll put the link to the to that in the show notes. Absolutely. So if any listeners out there want to test drive Aspireship, what so what what should they do first? The first thing I would do is just go to aspireship.com and you can sign up for a free account there and that'll give you access to section one of all the foundations programs. And I would just go in and play the videos, maybe take some notes and think, would I be interested in exploring this further? And could I see myself doing this in real life day to day? So that's kind of the first step. Okay, awesome. And then once you take a look at the different foundation that I guess the, the free courses, how does it work? Do you, you sign up and you can, how does Aspireship work? I guess, what's the platform? So, like? Yeah, it's all on demand. So once you get through section one, if you want to finish the foundations program, you would just press purchase. It's two ninety nine, dollars which includes sales, rev ops, marketing, all the courses we were talking, customer success. Mm-hmm. And that's that like level one. And once you finish that, there'll be an assessment that's just looked up and evaluated by the team. And then you would receive a a certificate that you can add to your resume, to your LinkedIn. Okay, cool. And then you're off to the races. Like you can apply for jobs and these different. So I, okay. Yeah. So I know one of the things um, that a lot of the teachers talk about when you interview them is the timeline of what it, how long it took them. And it sounds most of them committed to the idea. This was not going to be an overnight thing. I'm not going to find 
you know, a new job in two weeks, what would you say is the average timeline or that people should kind of have in their head as they, as they consider jumping into this? I think it depends which profession they're looking to explore, what kind of upskilling they're looking to explore. In my perspective from when I was transitioning, it took me um, about six months and then I was working full time and then, you know, job searching and upskilling on top of that. What I've heard from some teachers in the community now, it could take a year, it could take a year and a half, it could take two years. It really depends on how much are you actively applying? How much are you networking? So in that vein, I just try to recommend that when you are on that job search, you're you're being intentional and strategic, you know, maybe Tuesday, Thursday night, you apply to jobs. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday, you network or reach out on LinkedIn. So just making sure in that aspect that you don't get burnt out too in the job search. So it it does take time and is a process. Like you said, it's not an overnight thing. And I think going back to what we talked about earlier with that mindset, just knowing this is going to be tough. Mm-hmm. You're changing your whole career and it's it's worth it. You know, you've listened to those podcast episodes where they're just elated yeah. to, to have done it. So it's just kind of that mindset piece where you will get rejected a lot and you, and just don't take it personally, keep moving forward because you will be able to do this, um, and get to the other side. Yeah. Okay. I, I really appreciate that insight. Cause I know just listening to the episode, some people say it takes six months. Some people say it took me two years, but they also will say to you, I was, I didn't have but so much time to apply. I, you know, I was busy working. I had, you know, other responsibilities, but it definitely sounds like once they made that decision, decision, they were intentional with taking those steps, taking those actions. It's like the ball starts to roll. You start to feel like, okay, I'm getting somewhere. But if we, if we sit in this place of, you know, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. Like, I think that's almost worse because you're, you're staying in action in no, I'm sorry. You're staying inactive. You're not taking the next step to, to find the next thing. So I really hope that, you know, if you're out of place and you're just wondering if it's time to switch careers, that you'll definitely take a look at Aspireship. And I want to encourage you to listen to the teacher career coach podcast, because you will get so uh, excited and find so much inspiration in these teachers. Cause they're just, I mean, they're like, they're like me, they're like you, like they just hit a place where they're like, I got to do something different. And I just, I'm so grateful that this program exists. And I'm so glad I found you guys on a walk that day. So Elizabeth, is there anything else that you want our listeners to know about Aspireship? Well, I'm just excited to share with you all today. And I just encourage everyone, like if you're post off the fence and you know, you want to change careers, it's so worth it. Like it's your life. It's your every day. So I'm just rooting for you guys. And if you need any support, I'm out there and I can't wait to see where you go next. If you, if you change careers. Yeah. And definitely connect with Elizabeth on LinkedIn. She's, she's there. She's sharing some really great information and that's how we connected. I think I just reached out and was like, oh my gosh, I love your podcast. Come on my podcast. <laughs> it's awesome. And then we found, we had so many similarities. I like- know go game cock. So <laughs> go tigers. Well, this has just been so fabulous. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Please note that the therapy show with Lisa Mustard is for informational and entertainment purposes only and not a substitute for professional medical or mental health advice. Always consult with your therapist, doctor, or physician before implementing any suggestions from the show. The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard is edited and engineered by Chelsea Weaver. If you're looking to start a podcast or ready to take the editing off of your plate, be sure to visit ChelseaWeaverPodcasting.com. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamustard.com to access the show notes and discover all the pod courses and other continuing education offerings. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank you.